with great love and respect in my heart. I welcome you to this beautiful Sunday morning from sunny Sunil. <laughs> Before we begin, let's just take a moment to arrive and settle down. So wherever you are, just pull your spine straight, open your shoulders, close your eyes and lighten your mind. Invite that peace, calming, cooling sensation in your eyes. Just bring your attention to the breath, nothing more. With eyes closed, bring the mind to the breath. Imagine your body is the house, breath is the guest, and mind is the host, taking the guest on a tour of the house, very gracefully, slowly, no anxiousness, no rush. Imagine the breath is permeating throughout your whole body. Every single cell of your body is receiving new energy, prana shakti, prana, that comes saturated with each breath. Let the mind stay in touch with the breath constantly, whether breath is coming in or going out. Mind will try to Go somewhere else, bring it back, stay with the breath. After a couple of breaths, imagine all the restlessness settling down the way sand settles in a glass of water. Have that imagery, sand just settling in the glass of water. Lightness, as the breath comes in, you feel light, there is no heaviness. There is a sense of gratitude and welcoming this breath in my heart. Breath is the most precious thing we got. Each visitation is so precious, it brings us back to life. What could be more precious than that? Can I be fully present to this breath with gratitude, immense gratitude in my heart? Pause the breath wherever it is for a moment. Just pause it. And slowly release. Again, pause it. 
think of stillness of your eyes now. Stillness of the breath, stillness of the eyes, stillness of the mind. Your mind is resting in the center of the forehead. No force. Just let it be still. And then release the breath again. <clears throat> Passing it again. If there is any tightness that comes in your body, try to release that. Release that tightness. Like a flower opening. Eyes still, mind still. Thank you for taking this time. Just open your eyes. Kasturi kundal vasai mrigadhund hai banmai Aise ghat ghat piwa hai dunia janai na Kasturi, that intoxicating fragrance of musk resides within the deer. Intoxicated with that fragrance, deer runs amok all around, under this bush, that bush, that tree, that tree, looking for it. Little that the deer knows, the fragrance of musk is emanating from within. That which we are seeking is within us. It's not found outside. Yes, we are used to engage in the world with our senses. Gratification of the senses gives us pleasure. That pleasure gives us a feeling of happiness. Nice things to see, nice things to hear, nice things to touch, taste, smell. We feel good. <coughs> but this feeling doesn't stay very long. It's fleeting. Fleeting. And we keep on going, looking for it more. If we have to make any effort, why not make effort for that? This feeling stays longer and it's not changing every moment. So this work that we do, whatever, spiritual practice you have is really an attempt to find that. That is not just fleeting all the time. It is within you. But just because we are not used to turning inward, turning towards our self, we keep looking for it in different things. We find it in our senses, gratification of the senses, then people we like and we love, and our children, our pets, whoever, plants. The truth is that source of happiness is within you. If you don't have that within you, nothing from outside can make you happy. You have seen, you have experienced, 
sometimes when you are not centered, not grounded, even the most precious thing that you have in your life doesn't look good in that moment. That happiness, the source of happiness is within us. And it begins with turning our attention towards our self. Think of a moment when you can just sit and not think about anything. Nothing. What is there? All of a sudden you get a glimpse of that light that's already within you. Then the mind goes, thinks about a situation, a problem, or joy, sadness, it comes back. So the practice of stilling our mind that we practice is very important. And you can do it anytime. You don't have to be sitting in lotus and looking holy. Nothing. No matter where you are, just stop the breath right at the throat. Think, just think. Your eyes are still. If you try to make them still, they will not. You have to start with just putting a thought there that my eyes are still. When the breath is still, eyes are still, mind naturally becomes still. Stillness of the mind begins with the stillness of the eyes. We do all these, but they are not just techniques. It's not just a little something you learn and it begins to work. That experience becomes even richer. in an environment of devotion. Devotion. Devotion to what? Devotion to the higher. In whatever name, form you may think of. Just supreme light. Supreme presence. I don't know what it looks like. I don't know what to call it. But just having the notion that there is something higher that I can bow to. Even not bowing to, but just to any person or anything, just bowing to something bigger helps us quite a bit. All the load you are carrying on your shoulders, when you bow, it rolls off you feel lighter. <clears throat> when we have not tasted bowing from the heart, we feel so burdened, so heavy. Our shoulders are so heavy. Looks like we are carrying the world on our shoulders. Bowing has a very important place in great traditions. You go to a church, you kneel. God doesn't care whether you kneel or stand, but something happens to you when you kneel. You go to a temple, you go to a place that you respect and just bow. Immediately you feel light. How beautiful our day becomes when we wake up in the morning and just have this little sweetness in our heart and say, Oh Supreme Light, may this be a good day.
May this day be a good day. May I meet good people. And may I do something good with my hands. Just even saying this lightens our burden. Because if we don't have something that we can talk to in such a way, we wake up with all the weight on our shoulders. With devotion, there is little humility in our heart. If the humility is not there, there is arrogance and there is this desire to fight. I hear the word people want to fight. They want to fight the, the world. They want to fight even over their own disease. I wish the word fight was replaced with something else. Can you see in the martial art? They don't fight. They know the techniques. They use the energy. In life we can use that energy without having to fight. In our own home. Sometimes we feel you have to fight for your right. Little humility, little at places where we need to bow down, saves us from so much trouble. In our own life, we have people, we have spouse, we have children, we have friends at work, co-workers. How do we deal with them? Is there a feeling of you are being threatened and you need to protect yourself and you need to fight? All the energy that goes in that direction, if that energy was shifted a little bit to find a place in their heart. Whoever you are having this disagreement with or whatever, Instead of building yourself up, building your arsenal, feeling strong to go and fight, you can use the same energy to build yourself in such a way that you find a place in their heart. It does require a little humility, a little bowing down, a little understanding, a little not always thinking about me, me, me putting ourselves in their shoes sometimes and just imagining what would make them appreciate it, what would make them happy. If the mind is not in the right place, it will come back again and say, why it's only me who has to do it all the time? When we are living our dharma, we don't look at the other, we look at ourselves. What is my dharma? Am I living my dharma fully? And living your dharma is not always easy. Sometimes it takes a little effort. Sometimes it takes a little discomfort, a little humbling. But it works. It always works. I find it very useful as soon as I wake up in the morning to just push away from whatever is going on in, in the mind or whatever nightmares or dreams or some thoughts that might have entered. 
just pull back myself just for a moment and be quiet. In my mind, I bow to my Guru. Just and bring an image that my Guru is standing there just blessing me, saying, you have a good day today. And just even though it's my own thinking and imagining, but it becomes so real, so alive, just to start the day with my Guru's blessing. You have a good day today. Go make effort. My energy is with you. With this little inspiration, go out and start my day. If I don't have such a thing, then the fear will just, will be there. Oh, how am I going to do this, all this, 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 and if we have a little devotion, it gives us strength. Devotion gives us wind behind the sail. You got your boat and you got your sail up from where the wind is coming. It is our devotion that creates that. To, even if it doesn't matter, it's this devotion I'm talking about goes beyond uh, race, religion, country, the ideology. Yeah. Don't have any name for it. Just know there is something higher. Because you are not the mightiest and highest and you are... So, if you feel you are not that big that you can control everything, there is, then there is something higher. And that higher doesn't need to come and prove it to you. Some people say, oh, I don't believe in anything, I need the scientific rule. It is right there all around us. What makes the seed sprout? That Shakti, that energy is there, hidden within every molecule of this universe. From tiniest to the largest. So I don't give it a name, I don't give it a form, I don't give it a religion. I just say, Oh Supreme Light, I don't understand you, you are beyond my comprehension, all I know that you exist. It is there how to bring it closer to us. Water accumulates in the low spots. Devotion is like the little spot that, that Shakti can come and fill in. Some people say, I'm atheist, I don't believe in anything. Fine, then not believing into anything is also believing something. <laughs> Today just this thought had come to touch this topic and remind each one of us that what role devotion plays in my life. In different traditions people express their devotion in different ways. And they will go to a temple and offer some sweets and say, Oh, may this be, may I receive the blessing for this? If it doesn't happen, then devotion is not an exchange. And it should not be tested or whatever small things. <clears throat> the notion of devotion is so deeply entrenched in us that it doesn't need to be reminded every time. It 
the thing that is so sacred doesn't need to be voiced. You know, in India, people really don't say, I love you. Husbands and wives don't really say. I didn't hear. Maybe nowadays it's starting. Because if that doesn't need to be said, it's there. And in a whatever form it is, but it's there. People just <clears throat> know this in the depth of their heart. It's not questioned, it's not even asked for. It's understood that it's there. So, if you have been thinking about it, the role of devotion and how, what kind of relationship you have with it, please look at it. And even try it for a week. If don't, you don't have any, look at the way you wake up in the morning. What is the first thing you do? The best time is the first thing in the morning. Some people get up first thing and they're thinking about their cat and their dog and their this and that, children and spouse. Just take 30 seconds for yourself and that supreme light. Every soul has its own journey. Who you are trying to save, you will save, but just give yourself 30 seconds. Give yourself a minute. They can wait. They can wait. Once you start taking a little time for yourself in this way, without thinking about anybody else, just coming back to your groundedness, your stillness, and just remembering that Supreme Presence, even for a short time. It will help. First establishing that devotion in our heart, then there are many ways to nourish it, nurture it, deepen it, and, but first we have to be very clear that I am aware, or at least I have a little space in my heart for that supreme light. And my devotion is not a business, it's not an exchange. I'm not asking for anything in return. It will come, that I know. Sometimes we look at things on the surface and pray for things and if it doesn't happen, then we are disappointed. <clears throat> if we really have to pray for anything, to say, O oh, Supreme Light, may I have enough strength and ability to make the best out of whatever situation may arise. And we do. No matter. The worst of our fears sometimes happen and we go through it. It is the devotion that gives us that strength and that capability and ability to go through the worst I bow to that devotion residing in each of our hearts and thank you for your presence. I didn't know what I was going to speak about you, about today, but this came. So I hope there was something for you. Take it. It's useful or leave it. It will go back to where it came. Thank you all so much. Have a wonderful week.